Hello and welcome to the video. This is a short video on how to do soldering. Now, soldering is one of those skills that it is almost impossible to avoid in the hobby. Lots of modern flight controllers don't come with any pins on them at all. So it means that you have to spend a happy 20 minutes, half an hour putting all the pins on. Or if you don't put pins on, then you've got to kind of solder leads onto boards instead. And I have uh, been helping uh, in between lockdowns here in the UK a couple of friends do a couple of builds and I uh, thought, you know what, let's do a video. Now I did a, a video of this ages and ages ago and I thought with uh, the newer cameras that can hopefully focus a little bit closer up, I'll take you through how all this works. Now there are a couple of things that you have to remember before you start all the soldering stuff and starting getting all the little pins and pieces that you need to start making the bits that you want to put together. Without the proper tools, getting a good solder joint is extremely difficult, even for somebody who is very accomplished. I've been soldering for, we well, don't want to think about that, a very long time, 30 or more years. Uh, and I like to think I'm reasonably proficient, but st I still struggle to get a good solder joint sometimes, even with the good equipment. Now, the good equipment is obviously going to be, first of all, a soldering iron. This is my Weller soldering station. Uh, this has replaced one that gave up about two years ago uh, that I'd had from my teenage years when I was an apprentice. That's how long these things last. They are an investment. They last forever. Now, the reason that I really like the Weller ones in particular is the way it works is that the tips are interchangeable. So you can have different sized tips for different jobs. You can have the fine tip like this for soldering PCBs and you can have the big tip like this for when you want to solder things like power pads on your flight controller. As well as having a decent iron, then there's some other main things you need as well. Obviously, the other main one is going to be solder. Now, this is probably the biggest mistake that I see people making is not using lead-based solder. Now, I know it's not great for the environment, but then use a little bit every time. This is a roll I've had for a couple of years and it's still going strong. It's used in everything. If you use some of the other solders, uh, you will really struggle to get a really nice, shiny uh, solder joint that's going to be both stable and electrically uh, solid as well. Having the lead in here, this alloy uh, that solder actually is, uh, will make it flow better and make it work better. So a friend of mine, just to give you an example, um, he came over before the latest lockdown and we were looking at sorting out his wing and uh, soldering was something that he'd really struggled with. And when we talked about it, it was clear he was using some of the nasty solder. Now he went out and bought some lead-based solder. That happened to be the TBS branded stuff. Hello to Adam, by the way. And uh, he found that the soldering that he was doing was night and day. He had been with the same eye and everything else. It made it go from like a snotty blobby mess into soldering that looks like mine. And this is probably the easiest way to make a dramatic difference to your solder. So if you haven't got any good quality lead based solder, invest in some. It'll make all the difference in the world. So those are the two things you have to have. Things that I would recommend that you have. Uh, something like this, where you have some kind of uh, wire wall, copper wall inside is great. You can dab your soldering iron into it and uh, get rid of all the solder that's stuck to it before you start your next joint. Other things are handy is this kind of sponge that's part of the soldering iron. Uh, you need that to wipe off the tip. Whenever you do a soldering joint, and we'll get to the soldering in a second, uh, you want the soldering iron tip to be nice and silver. You don't want it oxidized. Uh, you don't want it to have that nice kind of golden color that you get on the top of exhaust on motorcycles. Uh, you want to wipe that off and uh, you want it nice and clean. So the, for me, the way I've always done it is uh, I use this to take off the blobs of solder and then I'll use the pad and you'll see when I do the soldering in a second to kind of just clean the tip and make sure it is absolutely clean before it goes onto the joint. The only other thing that I'd recommend is having some kind of flux. Uh, this is a flux pen. Uh, you can get them from kind of electronic shops, online, eBay, Amazon, all these usual places have them. This is really handy because what it does is it makes sure that as the solder melts, it actually uh, 
adheres to both the pin or the wire that you're soldering and the pad as well. If you look on something like a modern penny or this is a one cent coin, uh, you know that they don't stay shiny for very long and that layer of oxidization can get between what you're trying to solder to and the solder. The idea with flux is that it helps break that down and get a better solder joint. Now modern solder like um, this stuff, it has like a flux in it anyway that helps with that. But on bigger pads, I like just to put a little line of this stuff down. This is no clean flux, so you don't need to spend hours trying to get it off after the fact, but it just helps make sure the joints are perfect. So with all that said, let me jump on the table and we'll, this time we're going to actually attach everything to this F411 WSE from Matek. Uh, big tip, of course, is when you have a new flight controller like this, the first job isn't to start soldering everything onto it. The first job before you even warm your soldering iron up is to plug it into the computer and make sure you can flash it and it works and you can see everything. That way, if you go and put the soldered pins on or the wires or whatever, and then try and talk to it again with the computer and it doesn't work, you're pretty confident it's something you've done. Uh, also, you tend to find that the resellers of these things uh, won't accept flight controllers back if it's covered in lots of snotty soldering. So it's always better to test it first before you crack on. Right, enough waffling on. Let me show you the process, the steps to go through making a good solder joint. So here's the board split into two. Uh, this particular Matek board has a top and a bottom piece. The bottom piece has all the power connections and some of the pins, and we're gonna have to connect the flying lead that's gonna connect the battery, and also the connections to the ESC on this bottom board first. But the first job I'm going to do, before we do some of the big pads, let's focus on doing some of these little pins. Now the way this works is that the top board pushes together like that. This is how it's going to be in the model. Make a note of which way is first. Check inside the model for the kind of pins that you're going to need if you're going to add pins, whether they're vertical or right angled or whatever. Now I've done that in the model that this is going to go into, so I know what I'm soldering where. And now I know that these are going to be all vertical pins. These pins actually come as part of the kit. So these are going to sit here. And the thing I need to do before I get too far is grab the pen and put a little bit of flux on the back of here just to make sure that those pads are as clean as they possibly can be and then push the pins into place push them home and hopefully they'll stay in place uh, if they don't i'm going to show you a little trick that i use to keep it in position now i use the um, this blue stuff a lot um, blue tack is what it's called here in the uk it's the kind of stuff you use to put posters on walls and things like that temporarily now i'm going to use the very fine soldering tip here it's up to temperature hopefully you can see here that it's kind of a gold color i'm going to wipe it on the damp sponge so with the tip wipes on the damp sponge, you can see here it's nice and silver. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put the very smallest blob. I'm trying to do this off to the side of camera rather than directly above it. So apologies for the slightly weird angles here. I'll try my best to show you exactly what I'm doing. Put a little bit of heat into the joint first, feed in a little bit of solder, watch it heat and wick into the joint and then remove the soldering iron get a quick wipe on the sponge so it's nice and clean again and repeat the process and i'm going to work along the back again apologies i'm trying to doing this trying to do it so you can see what i'm doing uh, so the trick here is is what i'm doing is i'm warming up the joint very slightly first then i'm feeding in a little bit of the solder keeping the iron in place and that is then going to watch the solder kind of wick and flow onto all the surfaces. As soon as I see that I'm going to remove the soldering iron and almost instantly the solder is going to go back to being a nice solid metal again. Now again just be a little bit careful of the fumes here. Now I've done the back pins all right uh, this isn't my best soldering because like I say I'm off at a weird angle, but hopefully you can see. So warm it up, a little bit of solder, let go, warm it up, a little bit of solder, keep it on there for a second, let go, warm it up, a little bit of solder. Hmm, that one's not going very well. We might come back to him in a minute. Let's see if I can reheat and reflow that. Hmm, that's not great. Okay, let's finish the others and we'll come back and we'll fix that one. Looks like that's a little bit of a dry joint. Now a dry joint is where, uh, in fact, you know what? 
that, this, that could be a great little thing to show you in the video. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Let me finish these others. And what's probably causing that is that pad is probably a little bit dirty or the pins maybe got a little bit of muck on it as well. Uh, if it ever isn't flowing, just a little bit more solder usually will get it so it works. So most of those pins look good to me with the exception of that snotty one in the middle. And again, that's probably due to a little bit of dirt or um, something on the joint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just heat it up again, a little bit of, fre bit of fresh solder, and then hopefully that will fix it. So hopefully you can see even with the kit, sometimes you occasionally get a joint that's gonna be a bit weird, but at the end of it, it should look all like this, all like nice little shiny cones completely encompassing the pin or the wire that you've put through. So the next part of the job is to put the power leads onto the bottom piece. Now, I've stripped a little bit of the insulation back, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tin it. Again, soldering iron, this time I'm using the big tip to get lots of heat into the joint, making sure it's nice and clean. And I'm going to put a little pool of solder onto the tip of the iron, warm up the conductor, little bit more solder into the conductor, hold it there for a second or two, and watch it all wick into the, it just like looks like it's sinking in. When it's like that, then it is pre-tinned, and those are the cables ready. Even with cables that come in kits, I would always uh, do that process again, so it's using the solder that you're gonna have on the board. It'll just help it all melt together a lot better. Now, we need to pre-tin the pads on the flight controller, so I'm just gonna put a, just a dab of the flux on each of the pads that I'm going to do. And then again, making sure that the tip is completely clean. I'm going to put a little bit of solder onto it, put it on the pad to warm it up. I'm gonna feed the solder in. And so when I take it off, there's this nice little silver puddle of solder that's going to set up. Let me just do all the other pads and when I've done all these, uh, connecting the wires gets a lot easier because rather than solder the wire to the pad, what you're doing is you're melting the solder that's already on the pad or reflowing it, uh, as well as melting the solder that's already on the conductor and it makes it an awful lot easier to make it off. So doing the prep like this should make it a lot easier and it should look like that at the end. Little shiny, beautiful silver pools. Now this is ready to put the power connector on. Again, it's been impregnated, the wires at the end, and pre-tinned with the same solder. So what I'm gonna do is then reflow the solder on both the wire and the flight controller together. So, a bit of solder on the iron, uh, and then hold the conductor over the top, press down on the iron, it's gonna melt the solder on the conductor. It's gonna melt the pad underneath, keep it in place, and there we go. That is the joint done. If it looks a bit scruffy, just add a bit more solder into the joint. Um, just make sure that there's a nice solid connection. Do the same with the negative pin. Again, reflowing the solder on both of the pieces with a nice blob of solder on the soldering iron should mean that we get a lovely nice strong connection and it's not going to be going anywhere that it shouldn't so the next job then is to do the same thing just for the esc pads exactly the same process so with the rest of the pieces soldered up in the same way we end up with a flight controller that's ready to install i've got my power lead on here i've got my esc on the other side and all the pins to connect everything now some people don't like to put pins some people like to solder wires directly uh, if you are following along with something like the wiring diagram on the matech websites you know you can do that but i tend to move my flight controls around as uh, models get retired it also means that if I do find that I've accidentally uh, made a mess with the connection, it's a simple case of unplugging and plugging the wires in. Uh, check out my video on how to crimp for how to crimp the other sides of these little pins that come onto here.
Last couple of things, safety really. Obviously you are dealing with very hot stuff, so be aware of that. I know it's a bit of an obvious thing to say. Um, keep the sponge that you're using nice and wet, because um, that is, in my humble opinion, one of the keys to getting a really clean joint. And obviously the fumes that come off uh, soldering is brilliant for you. Do it in a well ventilated place. I also have, when I'm doing a lot of it, a little fan. Uh, a 12 volt fan with an XT60 on the side that I plug into a 3S LiPo that just kind of blows across the top. Uh, just keeps the fumes from coming up into my face. The only last bit, I guess, is uh, what about if you're not using pins? What about if you do want to solder wires directly? I do it in the same way as I soldered on the power connections here. Strip a little bit of the insulation off, pre-tin the wire with the soldering iron, and then just plug it in through the hole and then do it as though you were doing one of the pins on here. Once you've finished the job, the last thing to do is to do a visual inspection. Actually make sure that you haven't accidentally bridged any of the pins. That can be hard to see, particularly if you've done a really nice job and all your solder's all shiny. If you're not sure, you can use your own meter uh, or your multimeter on a resistance setting just to make sure you haven't shorted out any of the pins. And the final thing, of course, is to put uh, the probes on the resistance setting over the power pins if you've done like I have here to make sure that there's no dead shorts. Um, there shouldn't be if you've kind of followed the process along, but it's one of those good bits of practice to get into. And then when you've got all that done, we can plug it back into the computer, carry on with the iNav setup, and we're set. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in soldering or just it's one of those things that you're really scared about. I absolutely understand why that is. Soldering is a skill like anything else. The more you do it, the better you're going to be. So I wouldn't recommend doing your first soldering job on a little flight controller like this. I'd get yourself a soldering iron. Definitely get some decent solder. Uh, this will make the difference in the world, night and day, between uh, how the soldering is going. I know quite a few people who've uh, who've had this experience now, so I cannot stress this enough. Get yourself some good solder. Uh, my friend, as I say, Adam, hello Adam again, uh, got the TBS branded stuff and he is just so happy that his soldering now looks a little bit like mine. Uh, and it's great to see him going from really struggling and being worried about the whole soldering thing to now uh, being quite comfortable about it as well. So check out the other videos on the channel of building. I can now crack on and put this inside my model and carry on the setup. I'll put a link to that video below when it's done so you can see where this ended up. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff. Thank you.